Hi, I'm Laurel and I'm a designer here at Zerp. Welcome back to our Zero to Website series, part three. In this six part series, you're gonna learn to build a website and have it be responsive. But for this lesson, we're gonna learn about the responsive grid system. And if you need to catch up on the last two episodes, check out the link here. The cool thing about the foundation grid system is it'll make your content fit on any screen and device. Let's check out what the grid can do. Okay, so we have this great demo set up for you and we're just gonna go through what all is here. So over in the right, you'll see um, some different colors being used to um, kind of explain what we're going through. Um, the purple is the content. Uh, you'll see a menu and a content section. And then on the side, you'll see uh, pink, which is the padding, or just gives a little default um, room in between the edges there. So gutters are super important, and as you can see here, they're indicated with um, the pink on the edges. Uh, but let me take you to another demo that we have um, to better illustrate why gutters are so important. So the gutter is padding that is in each of the columns. And you'll see here that I have a three column example, an image and two text boxes. Um, and they are touching each other. And they're also touching the outside of the, um, of the screen size too. They're running up to the edge. Now that's not good. Um, you don't want that. You want some padding in between um, all of these items so that they have a nice look and feel and they're easily legible. Um, so we're gonna go over to the HTML here and you'll see that I have a collapse class on the row. This is a foundation class that we've created so that you can easily remove the default um, gutters um, from, from the code that you have. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this so you can see our, our defaulted um, gutter or padding and how that affects each column. So if you'd like to change the um, default gutter size, you can easily do that by going and um, defining that in the CSS and overriding what we have set up for you. So what makes up the foundation grid? Well, we have rows and columns. As you see over here, we have a row and it's containing some columns, which we'll get into momentarily. But the thing about a row is that it's 1200 pixels wide by default, it's centered in the page, and it breaks down to 12 columns. And the reason we use 12 columns, which you can change if you'd like, but the reason we use it is because it's easily divisible by two, three, four, six, and 12, which uh, gives a lot of room and flexibility to move around these, um, these column containers um, and make your site whatever you want it to be. Um, so a row is a container for your columns and your columns are a container for your content. And your content can be anything from te uh, text to images, menus, um, basically anything, even rows. So since there's 12 columns in your row, um, let's start talking about sizing your columns and how we can play with that um, in this grid. So within the columns, um, you'll see that we have a small 12 here, but we have a few different uh, syntax rules. So you can use small, medium, or large, depending on the screen size. So here we have an example of what a small 12 column um, stacked on top of another small 12 column looks like. You'll see that this is technically for a small screen, but because we haven't specified medium or large, it stays um, stacked and full width of the row, no matter what screen size it is. But obviously we want that to change depending on the screen size. So let's, let's mess around with medium and large um, screen sizes and change that up so it, it alters. So I'm gonna add medium six to each of these column classes. And you'll see that now the layout is slightly different. The menu and the content uh, containers now are side by side, each taking up 50% of the row. And that switches back to the small screen size by stacking them when you get to the smaller size. All right, so we have small, we have medium. Now let's add a large. And large would be for desktop screens. So I'm going to do a large three for the menu because that'll be like a small little column on the side. Um, and then we want a large nine for the content because that's the main, most important part of the page. So switching over, you'll see now that the menu takes up only three columns and the content takes up nine for large screens. We also have extra large screens and extra extra large screens, which you can specify here in the column uh, class as well if you need it for televisions or 
anything larger. Also, if you don't indicate small in your column class, it will automatically assume 100% of the row and start stacking them. So let's do that. Let's remove these smalls and see what happens. Now we're gonna go to the small screen. And look, it does the same thing, even though we don't have those small syntaxes specified. We start with a mobile first approach. So when you're using the grid classes, you need to think in terms of a progressive enhance enhancement. And that means the small class will apply to everything until it's overridden by medium or large. But you also don't need to specify small um, because it will always be full width if you want it that way. Also, not every block will need a small, medium, or large, but it's important to understand um, how those affect each other. So just to make sure that your content um, when aligned by each other don't touch, we have some default padding, which is um, which is shown here in pink. It is, wouldn't show on yours, but um, for the purposes of this, um, this little example, we've made it pink so you can see it. And it's default, so it's always there, but you can change that if you want a little more padding or less. That's, that's possible too. So what if you want to use or have columns within other columns? Well, we can do that as well, and it's called nesting. So let's show an example of that. So let's say in this content section of this blog site, um, we want to have an image and then some text off to the right of it. Um, you would do that by repeating the row and column structure within one of the content column. So as you see here, there is now an image and a content section split up evenly within the larger content column. My nested columns line up perfectly in the padded areas um, with the parent column. Okay, great. So you just learned to create a sweet ass layout using our foundation grid system. And next week, we're gonna learn how to scaffold with a sample site with my dear friend, Christine. For the fastest way to learn foundation, check out our Intro to Foundation course, which the link is down below, and you get to be in a live webinar with the development team, The Creative Foundation. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and Yeti gets a hot fat. Until next week, bye bye